Hello guys, welcome in another episode where we create a project management application. We did a pretty good work in previous episodes with our backend, but now I believe we should focus on securing our application. In current state of our application, we can freely access every resource on our server, which for obvious reasons is bad. Today it is about to change. We will start from enabling our security, implementing JSON web token, and of course test if it works. With that being said, let's start coding. First I will create our user, it will be named project user, annotate it with entity, and also let's extend our base entity and implement user details because we will need those to authorize our user. So what a user should have? First it should have a name, of course, second, an email, a password, and I will create also a num named role and define some roles like user and admin enumerated, a num type, string role, role. Also, it should have a field that will determine if user is enabled or not. Now, two things that we need to do is to implement these methods from user details, return this.password, this.username, is account non-expired, I will set it for now to true, same goes for is account not locked, and is credentials non-expired, but for is enabled, we return this.enabled. For granted authorities, will this on hack, authorities equals new hash set, authorities.add new simple granted authority, this dot role dot name and return our authorities. Now let's come back to our table and define custom indexes for our entity. First index will be of name indexed one and here column list will be id. Second we'll have column list and here just email to quicker find our users by email. Now let's create this repository. Now we should create detailed service for our user. Annotate it with service. It should implement user details service. And here project user. User equals service. Get project by email. Email. And we should return new user. User. Dot get username. Get password. Is enabled. True. 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 And then user dot get authorities. Don't mind that this method is named load user by username. And we pass email and search in our repository by email. It doesn't matter. It just searches for user and if it doesn't find it, it should throw an exception. So next thing, we should go into project management security and here we will change a little. So first, any request should be now authenticated and only requests under slash should be permitted. Our session management should be stateless because we no longer need it having the JWT token. Here, we will need a couple of things for our JWT token to work. We will have to introduce a filters to filter our request and then respond with JWT token. First, we will create JSON authentication filter, which will extend username password authentication filter. And here we'll overwrite attempt authentication. And now we create our custom logic. First, we get the reader. And here we will have to surround this with try catch. Next, we'll use string builder to build our authentication string. Next, we'll have to create a one more object in our security. This will hold login credentials. 
and it will be a simple object with just email and password. We can try to parse our request to this login credentials object string builder to string and login credentials class. Okay, now we have our request. So we can create our username password authentication token from this get email of request dot get password next we set details to the request and token and we'll return this authentication manager and authenticate our token awesome second filter that we'll need is jwt authorization filter which extends basic authentication filter here we'll create a static field which will hold our token prefix mirror will also need our project user detail service and our secret like so now we'll override protected method which filters our request so what we do here we first get our username password authentication token which we have created in previous filter so for this i will create additional method to get this authentication Awesome. Our filters are ready, but we are missing one key feature, which what happens if our authentication is successful? Now nothing. So let's create a handler for this. Auth success handler, which extends simple URL authentication success handler first some va variables like how long this token should live secret to encode it let's go into our application.yaml and here let's create variables for our auth success handler to get so first jwt and here expiration let's set it to one hour and also secret my secret remember you should never expose this secret to any unauthorized people here it's just for testing but if i would like to put this code on production i would have to change this secret and not show it to anyone okay so with this in mind let's go into our auth success handler Okay, it really starts to come together. So let's go back into project management security and register our filters. So our first filter, which we register is our authentication filter. And second one is our JWT authorization filter, authentication manager, project user detail service and secret. Also let's add exception handling and authentication entry point new http status entry point http status dot unauthorized oh i forgot to implement this method if authentication is null filter chain dot do filter request response and return And if not, security context holder get context set authentication auth and filter chain do filter request response. As you can see, we have gotten a response with a token. 
So let's copy this. Also inside headers, we have the same under authorization. We have our bearer and then token. So let's get him. And we are getting our response properly. Great. Let's see what happens if we disable this authorization header. Let's send this and we are getting unauthorized. Awesome. To summarize, we have fully implemented authorization with JWT in our application. It took some time, but now we can be sure that our application is safe. I believe that our backend is ready and in the next video, we can move into our frontend and start writing some views, pages and other user interface things. Okay, as always, thank you for watching and if you like the video, click a like button and subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Goodbye!